It's the peace show to save the world So give up our folly, give up our strife Because peace is the way of life Yeah, peace is the way of life These were not poor hippies in Woodstock, I'll tell you. These were regular kids from New York City that had short hair. It wasn't, they weren't even hippies. Just kids who wanted to hear some good music. So this is Interfaith Alive. There's never been anyone, past, present, or future, more dear to God than one who shares the message with others. Now, when you read the Bhagavad Gita and it's talking about the personality of Godhead, you can, or, or it says a certain name in there, even, about, of God. Just don't worry about that. Just take the knowledge and just put your favorite word for God or name of God in there. Great spirit job. Concessions were, were selling food the first day, but after the first day they ran out of food. Yeah. Okay, so our free kitchen, which was over on the other side of the forest, was already going. We were feeding everybody for free. Uh, I got six thousand dollars from the from the uh, people who were running the festival, the producers, and I went out and bought the pots and the pans and the cutters and the knights and the and the bulgur wheat and the and the rolled oats and the wheat germ and honey and soy sauce and and uh, apricots and almonds and made this muesli which they called woods uh, excuse me they called uh, granola and uh, <laughs> we, we're the, we, this is the mother of the granola hey, generation how did you know that I can't even believe you sat down when I'm in line somewhere just a couple weeks ago I was in line at the post office and it was a long patient line and I said to the lady I could tell she was like praying or something or talking to God. I don't know. She, she said something spiritual. You know how people try to let you know that they're a little bit religious, you know? And so I said, yeah, we're waiting in this line. If you pray for patience, God makes you wait. She's like, yeah. And she starts, she wanted a chance to raise the praise because someone who feels that love of God, whether they're Christian or Muslim or whatever, it, when it fills up, it has to bubble over. Everyone has this tendency. stopped this opening of slaughterhouses on the plea of Hindu kosher, you know, stopped it and taught nonviolence. He said, oh, you think you're following the Vedas, you nice kings? He was, you know, bewildering him with his words. Well, don't follow the Vedas and therefore don't eat meat. Don't slit the throats of these animals, you know, and uh, just follow Buddha. Just follow Ahimsa, nonviolence. He came, Buddha came to stop killing of animals in slaughterhouses by evil kings who were claiming to be Hindus. And they were using really dark rituals in order to slit animals' throats and eat them. And gentle persons, gentlemen in India, don't, don't eat meat. Sound of peace, the sound of joy, the sound of truth, the sound of love, the sound sound of love. It used to be like 50, 60 years ago in India, you could go to, through Bombay or Calcutta and the whole streets would be empty. The whole villages, everyone sits down and they hear this great, great story called the Mahabharata. Mahabharata. said was the best things that I could say from love of God and she thought that I was a Christian because we were both raising the praise together in public. It didn't take, if I would have put, told her my spiritual orientation it would have put the wall up, you know? So it's possible that faith begets faith, that inspiration begets inspiration, not delegation. Free will is something that, that, that great spirit creator gave us so that we could uh, show love. Someone can't hit you on the head with, a, with their scripture. Everyone's got their scripture they, and tell you you have to love God. That does not include your free will. When your heart blossoms like a flower and you just want to give it, then, you know, 
God, come, God, great spirit, whatever name, comes and meets you there. How much, how much can you give to great spirit with your two hands when you give everything in your heart? Even the little snicker bars you're hiding on the inner coat pocket of your heart. You want to give everything. And when you do that, how many hands does, does the Creator have to come give back to you? So many. Infinite. Infinite. The Bhagavad Gita is the climax of the Mahabharata. It's just that the, you forget Star Wars and, and, and uh, the Fellowship of the Ring and all these movies, because this is what they're all modeled after. And there are so many intricacies through the whole Mahabharata that is just astonishing. And you actually get to see the pure character of so many people. You know, and the Bhagavad Gita starts out, and they're on the battlefield, and they're saying all these names, and you go, what's all that? What's all this? I mean, you, if you were to listen, so for a whole week in India, they stop, and they hear the whole recitation. It's very long. I mean, it, you can go rent the movie from the Hindu store here in town, and it's but, 25, mean, you know, VCR tapes, two and a half hours each, you know, and that's the short version. So anyway, so these are the... Uh, a lot of different things, four of these, three of these, six of those. Uh, spiritual life is a science, you know, and it's, a, it's an ancient su supreme science about our relationship with the supreme. There's three things in reality. There is, um, there's the living entity, the jiva, the individual soul. There's the supreme soul, which is the param atma, or the jiva atma. Param atma is the supreme soul. And then there's the relationship. And the, uh, the relationship is bhakti, it's devotion. I'm here, you're there, but we're going to meet in the middle in love with the will of spirit and with the purity of intentions and then ultimately the purity of actions and the absolute purity of heart. But it um, starts with the four H's, humble, happy, helpful, and honest. And uh, never getting angry, uh, lusty, or greedy. It's good to look above people, brothers and sisters, when you see people out there. Look at their higher chakra up here. Be aware of their higher self and offer respect to that. If there's attraction there, that's where it should be. As faith is the constant, the variable is what we put it in. You know, and it, everyone has their rituals and formulas, and with those there are teachings and sacred blessings that come through. But you can get bound to chains of literalism, and you get stuck in the iron girdle that really was for your protection until you were strong enough and you grow. And then it's like a fruit tree. You can take the iron girdle away because the cows won't eat it and step on it. It's strong enough to repel illusion at a certain point. And you stop being narrow and you start broadening your mind. And this is the place where humanity is at, that those trees can reach out and touch the other leaves of the other trees. No getting in front of people's free will, usurping their free will with your own selfish, you know, desires. Anyway, so that usurping of free will is, is very bad. Any person who does that makes themselves mean. They don't honor a person's uh, volition. And that's the one thing Spirit gave to us. So it's really, it, it makes us saintly practically to understand that Great Spirit has given us free will. You know, we want to try our best to control the mind, control the senses to, to you know it's like if you got five horses they're like the five senses the reins of the mind the intelligence is the driver so when we're focusing our third eye really hard we should be able to draw our senses in like a tortoise draws his limbs in the shell and we just but one who controls the demands of the senses keeping higher principles and avoiding offenses to others is quickly enlightened by God's mercy, most kind, plain living, high thinking, they're not bound by the mind. Then it says, this nice verse, what looks like dark night to a soul in confusion is brightness of day for one not in illusion. And then it says, rejecting false notions of I, me, and mine, because that's what this is really about. Just reject it. You attain that abode far beyond space and time, even while you're here, you're in the spiritual abode. Uh, and then it says, this path is the way of pure spiritual life, secure from the pitfalls of all the illusions and strife. Then it says, if your mind is fixed on God, though you be on death's bed, 
you'll enter the spiritual world, you'll go back to Godhead. The Mahabharata, the story, is it really draws the mind in. You go, wow, 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 wow. And you see really illuminated qualities in people that are just like, how can they even form a sentence to describe this person so nicely? Sitting there and you are waiting for her love to carry you, to carry you. Spirits will carry Mother Earth and she'll carry you.